Hi and welcome back to another video. Sorry if I might sound a bit different, I still got something like a cold. So yeah, you might have to suffer with me. But today is the launch of the RTX 4060 Ti. And since this is an MSRP card, we are allowed to talk about this card today. And to straight get to the topic, we will look into 3D Mark times by GT1. Unfortunately, I don't have an RTX 3060 Ti with me for comparison, but as you can see, my focus for testing was mainly to have a lot of mid-range cards to see if it might be worth upgrading or not. The performance of the RTX 4060 Ti with 8GB will be just above the RX 6700 XT. It's about twice as fast as an RTX 2060 and about triple as fast as a GTX 1060. There are two things people are not happy about when it comes to the RTX 4060 Ti. One thing is a bit more present than the other and that's mainly the 8GB VRAM. And I mean, Nvidia is totally aware of that because when we got the product briefing, like the review guide, they told us, look, so we made these tests and we increased the cache on the card and because it has higher cache than before, it needs less access to the memory than before. And so that means Nvidia is totally aware that the customers want to see more than 8 gigabyte. And I personally find it always quite amusing when a company tries to tell the people what they want to buy. I mean, it's pretty clear if you go through all the comments, people want at least 10 or 12 gigabyte of memory on this card. And then Nvidia is like, no, you're only getting eight. And that's pretty strange from my perspective because typically as company, you should just sell what people want. So, and that's not what Nvidia is doing, which is quite confusing. And they are aware that people are not happy about the eight gigabyte. I mean, it's also a very theoretical approach because I mean, we will go to some gaming benchmarks in a second and all I can show you are FPS numbers of games that we have today, or maybe even older games. And a lot of people in the comments always say, yeah, but I might need like 12 gigabyte of memory in like four or five years. And I want to keep this card longer than just a year, which makes absolute sense but we cannot test into the future. We don't know what kind of games will be coming and we don't know if that's going to be relevant or maybe in the future, the GPU is even too slow to utilize the bigger amount of memory. So there are like different aspects to this, but to me, the main aspect is like, if customers want to buy it, just offer it to them. I don't get it. And yeah, so that's, that's one thing about it. And the other one is going to be the PCIe slot which we tested in today's video, but let's just go to gaming benchmarks first. In Cyberpunk, I decided to go for 1080p Ultra because only in this resolution, I will get like good FPS. And the 4060 Ti will achieve 84 FPS minimum and 120 on average. By the way, if you look at the chart, the blue bar will show you the power consumption. And to have it visually a little bit easier to digest, you can find the number of power consumption all the way to the left in the blue bar. And the 4060 Ti, as you can see, is quite efficient and will only consume 138 watt during Cyberpunk. I personally find it quite interesting looking at the RTX 2080, because at least in Germany, you can buy it used for about 250 to 300 euro. And it's only about 5 to 10% slower than the 4060 Ti. But on the other hand, it consumes twice as much power and it's lacking other features, such as DLSS 3, if you're looking for that. Now, there is a huge amount of cards and settings in this chart. It might make sense for you if you want to digest all the data to just simply pause the video and take a look at this. But generally speaking, the RX 6700 XT with FSR is performing quite well and beats a 2080, which is also running with DLSS. The 4060 Ti, however, can utilize DLSS 3 and will generate a huge amount of FPS and at the same time will only consume 122 watt. If we then also enable a frame generation, the 4060 Ti will be about three times faster than the RTX 2060. I also added Valorant as a high FPS shooter to my testing. And honestly, those results are quite odd. At least with the RTX 2080 and 2060, I was seeing so much higher performance than what I was expecting, at least compared to the 4060 Ti, which could also mean that the 4060 Ti is performing lower than expected. And I mean, I tested all of this three times and also swapped the cards in between to confirm it. And I still got the same results. So obviously something is wrong here, but as a tester or reviewer, I also find it very interesting and also important to show this data, even if something is wrong here, because if I would just repeat the test until I get the test results I want to have, 
that's not really scientific. The RX 6700 XT will perform quite well here and the average FPS is higher than with the other cars. But on the other hand, it's suffering when looking at the minimum FPS and it will be worse than the 4060 Ti. In Remnant from the Ashes, I decided to test in 1440p Ultra because the game is a little bit older, but it's very suitable for mid-range cards running WQHD. And the 4060 Ti will perform about twice as good as the 2060 and only consumes 136 watt on average. In Assassin's Creed, I performed the benchmarks in 1080p Extreme because only in that region we will get suitable FPS and the 4060 Ti will be on average at the same level as the RX 6700 XT. However, the power consumption is about 37% lower. And also comparing the 4060 Ti to the 2080, the performance is about 10% higher, but the power consumption is only twice as high. Now I also want to talk about efficiency and same as the 4070, the 4060 Ti is extremely strong. And in Assassin's Creed Valhalla in FPS per watt, it's performing about twice as good as all the other cards in this test. While testing the RTX 4060 Ti, I obviously plugged it several times into the board and took it out and then at a certain point I was looking at a PCIe slot and I was like, wait a minute. I mean, only half of the slot contains traces. And then I looked into the reviewer's guide and it only stated PCIe 4.0, like not the amount of lanes. Then I checked with Nvidia and they confirmed that it's only running with X8. I mean, it's a bit odd because I mean, you have the full size slot and it's only like half populated. And they told me that from their perspective, a card with this performance doesn't need a higher bandwidth than that. And also to remind you, an RTX 2060 is running 3.0 x16, which in the end is exactly the same as this one. So I thought, okay, I will just tape half of the slot so it's only running with x4. I basically cut the bandwidth in half to perform additional testing to see if this card is bottlenecked by bandwidth or not. In Remnant from the Ashes, the card suffers by about 9% looking at the minimum FPS. However, in Times by Extreme, for example, we cannot even see any kind of difference. And in Assassin's Creed, we are losing 7% performance if the card is only running with 4 lanes instead of 8 lanes. In Cyberpunk, you're losing 5% if the card is running with 4 instead of 8 lanes. So on average, it means that if we go from 8 to 4 lanes, we are losing about 5 to 10% in performance. So that's only a very little difference cutting it in half. It will also mean that if we go from 8 to 16, we would probably see no difference at all, maybe like 1% at best. That means that Nvidia is actually correct here that this card with X8 lanes would not be bandwidth limited. Generally speaking though, the 4060 Ti just visually is a beautiful card, similar to the previous uh, like Founders Edition cards. Beautiful design, very sleek, very elegant and also I mean temperatures look good, sound levels were very acceptable, so there was nothing negative I could find and now I simply want to also look into the card. So on the back we are starting with these two tiny Torx screws and also the IO shield we have to remove with additional Torx screws. And same as with a 4070 for example, you first have to enter with a like, tiny screwdriver in the front and then you can remove this magnetic backplate. Additional six screws later, you can remove this aluminium piece. And again, I mean, that is a very tiny card. Here we have the cooler. I already removed the card. The only thing I noticed is if you look closely on here, there's a tiny, like, now it's stuck to my finger. There's a tiny piece of copper, like, uh, you know, the, the, the pieces, the chips that fly off while probably milling across this copper surface. Seems like Nvidia might have to talk a little bit with the cooler manufacturer so they pay more attention on cleaning this because like theoretically that could be a danger to the card if it's in the wrong place, becomes loose, falls onto like other parts, causes a short. Yeah, that definitely requires more control. And here we have the 8106 GPU. At least it should be that way. It's not marked on here, probably because it's a sample, but at least in theory it's the 8106. And I mean, just look at the size of the GPU also. In general, this, like five years ago, 
this would have been an entry GPU, just by the, the size of the GPU and like the interface that comes with it, because having only eight latest PCIe and then only 128-bit memory bus, I mean, in the end, the, the memory bus width is nothing else than the amount of pins you have available for connecting memory ICs to the GPU. And like with this small PCIe interface and small amount of memory, it just saves a lot of space on the GPU and therefore allows the manufacturer to make it cheaper in production. But I'm not quite sure if that's something the end consumer will notice price-wise. Just looking at the PCB, you can see that three phases are not populated. And I guess similar to what we saw with the 4070, there will be OC designs, non-MSRP cards that will use the same kind of layout on the PCB, but then utilize all of the space when it comes to the faces. But apart from that, I mean, it performed fine for me. So I think also this configuration was okay. So much about the 4060 Ti. Generally speaking, it is a very efficient card, similar as the other ADA GPUs like the 4070 or even the 4090 in the end. And uh, I mean, the, the most criticism NVIDIA will get is simply for the eight gigabyte of memory. It's a question I cannot answer. Like, I mean, I see that it performs well in my tests and in my games, but we simply don't know what's going to happen in 40 years, if it's going to be relevant or not. And I mean, if you look at that it just performs the same as a 6700 XT, or at least in Germany, you can get a 2080 used for like 150 euro less and it will perform roughly the same. But it has twice as high power consumption. So much about this video, I can finally go to bed and rest. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye.